So we're in the physiology prep room right here. We'll go back to our deep 80 freezer. We'll open this up. And the middle shelf is where we keep our competent cells. And they will be in this pink rack right here, labeled competent cells. And inside there will be some tubes. And we'll just pull out a single tube for your transformation. It's marked 5 alpha heat shock. And we'll put that in ice. Make sure we put our competent cells back in. And make sure that the deep 80 is closed up tight. If this does not get closed, everything else here else and that's big trouble. So now we'll take our sample back into the classroom. This actually needs to sit on ice for about 15 minutes and thaw out. And so we'll go back in the classroom and let these thaw out. Okay, so now we've allowed our cells to, <clears throat> to thaw a little bit. And I can tell they're thawed. I'll flick out a little bit and I'll see that the liquid's moving. And what I want to do is transfer my ligation reaction into this, the competent cells. And so I'm going to take about five microliters of my ligation reaction. And I'm going to transfer it into my competent cells. And then I'm just going to flick the bottom of it to mix it in there. So this is mixing by flicking. Can you guys see that? Do that a couple times. And then I'm going to put it back on ice and incubate it for about half an hour. And then I'll perform the heat shock. Okay, so it's been about a half hour and our DNA has been incubating with our bacteria on ice. So now we're going to put it in through the heat shock. So I'm going to place my sample directly from the ice into the heat bath at 42 degrees that we prepared here. So we'll put it there and we're going to wait exactly 90 seconds. So at 90 seconds now we're going to pull it off, put it back on ice and wait for a couple of minutes, about two minutes, until that cools back down. And then we'll transfer that solution into some SOC media in a small really? culture tube that's been prepared. And this is a recovery media. It's going to allow the bacteria to recover from that heat shock and start producing the antibiotic selective marker that they've been given with the plasma. So it's been two minutes, so I'm going to take my competent cells, my transformed cells, Them up and transfer them to my SOC culture media. And now my culture media I'm going to take and put back on the 37 degree shaking incubator. So this is the shaking incubator. I'm just going to open it up, put my sample here. Now this is already running, but if not, I want to set it. We're going to set it for about 220 RPMs. So it's now been about 30 minutes since we did our heat shock transformation and transferred the competent cells into a culture tube containing SOC media. So we're now going to remove our culture and we'll plate it on a selective media and be ready to go on to our next step. Okay, so I now have my uh, culture competent cells and I'm going to put them on this selective media. So this is uh, LB auger and we have the antibiotic ampicillin on it and that's going to be a selective antibiotic for colonies that have uptaken our plasmid DNA. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull off about, I'm going to put about 50 to 100 microliters on my plate. 
Now I'm using autoclave tips so that they're sterile. And the big thing with autoclave tips is I'll put the tip on and then I've got to make sure that that box remains closed. Also, when I'm using sterile technique, I want to try and keep my pipette tip away from the sides of the tube in my pipette. So I'm going to pull out about 50 microliters of sample and I'm going to place it right in the middle of the plate and cover it back up. And now this has been contaminated, so I'll put it in my waste container and then I'll have to autoclave that later. Now I need to go ahead and sterilize. I'm going to use a spreader, a glass spreader right here that I created would be here. And the first thing I do is put alcohol on it and then I'm going to heat sterilize it or flame sterilize it. So I've got my Bunsen burner here and I'll click that on and pull this out of the alcohol solution and just wave it through. It doesn't take a whole lot to sterilize it, just about 10 seconds or so in the direct flame. Now if I put this immediately onto my bacterial suspension on my plate, uh, the heat will actually kill it, some of the bacteria. And so I'm not going to do that immediately. I'm going to let it cool in the air for a little bit. And then another way to check it is to take my spreader and place it on the edge of the plate. And it shouldn't leave a mark or melt it. And if I put it on the plate, that'll cool it off a little bit. Now, now I'm cool enough, I'm just going to take my spreader and move it back and forth as I rotate the plate. And I'll spread that suspension out evenly across the plate. And then I need to let that suspension dry into the plate before I can incubate it overnight. So I'll just take it and put it back here behind the Bunsen burner a little bit. Sterilize with alcohol run it through the flame a second time so it's sterile for the next person coming in. And then they'll probably flame it again when they go to use it. Now, as I mark these, one of the things that a lot of people do when they're first beginning is we need to mark this plate uh, so that we can identify it in the incubator as ours. And a lot of people will write on the lid of the plate, and that's actually not appropriate because lids can be switched between plates. And so when we mark a plate, we always mark it on the bottom, and we're always going to mark it around the edge. So this is an LB ampicillin plate, and this is going to be station 2-4. This one, and I'll, I'll mark what's in here. So this should be PQE GFP in E. coli DH5 alpha. And so when we write on the plate, we want to make sure that our writing is around the edges. A lot of people again want to write across the middle of the plate and that, but that's where our bacterial colonies are going to grow. If you have a writing across there, you won't be able to see those colonies from the reverse side of the plate. And so we write around the edges like that. Label it. So we'll check and make sure that this is dry. Uh, it's looking pretty good right now. So we'll take it and cap it and then we'll place this in our 37 degree incubator overnight. Now when I place it in the incubator, we want to place it with the lid down so that the plate's upside down. And one of the reasons that we want to do that is because if we place it right side up, the auger has a lot of water in it and it will release that water and dry out. Uh, but if we turn it upside down, then it keeps the plate itself hydrated while it's in the incubator. Okay. So we'll go ahead and put this in the incubator. Actually, let's go ahead and turn our flame off first. And we'll put this in the incubator. And then we will return tomorrow morning to select our colonies. Okay, so it's been about 16 hours later and we're gonna pull off our selected media plate out of the incubator. And we're gonna select some colonies on 
to grow up for our plasmid isolation. Okay, so now we're going to select one of these colonies and we're going to grow that colony up in these tubes which contain algae growth media with ampicillin on it. Again, we have the same selective agent. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the steri a sterilized toothpick. Again, I'm using gloves on this procedure to keep my hand germs off of the toothpick and colonies and that. I'm going to cover this back up because they're sterilized. And I'm just going to open up my plate here. I'm going to take this toothpick and I'm just going to dot a single colony on there. I don't have to do it hard. Did you see that? I'm just going to dot a single colony. Then I'm going to take the toothpick, drop it into my tube that contains my growth media, and I'll label this. And this is 2 4, and it's PQE 31 GSP. Now, this culture tube only needs to grow for about 16 hours. And the best way to do it then, if I've selected my colonies anytime before 5 o'clock, I'm just going to put them back in the rack, the toothpick, so that it's been used, so no one else will use it, hopefully. And later on, we'll put this into the shaking incubator at 5 o'clock. Of course, if you're doing it right at 5 o'clock, I just walk this directly back to the shaking incubator. And that's how we'll start our culture to isolate our plasmids. In our next step, we'll grow this overnight, and this will be full of a bacterial suspension. We'll harvest those bacteria and then isolate plasmids from them. And that will be the plasmid isolation step.